Get ready! You're tuned in to Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T, bringing you the hottest trending topics on social media. Stay connected. Instagram.com slash Lovely Tea 2002. Hey, you guys. Welcome to another episode of Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T. Yay! Hey, you guys. I hope you guys are doing good today. Welcome to Tea Time Unfiltered. So I want to come on here and talk about a situation that went down on my <laughs> shocker, 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 shocker to none of us, my Instagram page, okay? You guys know for months, hell, we might as well say for years now, honey, they've been trying to silence me anytime I speak my truth, okay? This is my truth. It ain't yours. It's mine. How I feel about a situation. It's like I get punished, right? They come out with the damn whips and they're like, shut up. Get back in line. Fall into submission. You're not allowed to think outside the box. That's how I feel anyways. So what happened is that the other day I had posted this post. Because um, as we all know, there's this huge, you know, push that's going on right now. I'm um, in the Asian American community. Um, eight people were gunned down in Atlanta and out of those eight people, six of them were Asian women. So the media has really been playing this whole racism against Asian Americans. They've really been like just running with this narrative. Now the man who shot these women, his name was Robert Aaron Long. And so right now, all you're seeing in the media for like the past few days is the media basically asking black people to stand in solidarity and, you know, black people should be advising the Asian community on what to do. The narrative all of a sudden switched from this white man, Robert Aaron Long, to the black community. And then I would notice in like when I was watching CNN, they were doing a lot of like, you know, they were showing old videos, not that old, but, you know, from like months ago, a year ago or so of black people targeting Asians in the, you know, like in San Francisco in Cali pushing them down one older Asian gentleman he died so they've been pushing this narrative that not only this white shooter went in and killed you know all these Asian women even though two of them were not Asian but that black people are also attacking Asians and Asians have it really bad there's a 1-800 number for them and then they've also been pushing the narrative that a lot of this hate came because of Trump you know Trump calling it the Kung Fu virus and you know saying it came from China and things like that um when it came to the whole c19 situation go to your own country attacks on asian americans and pacific islanders or apis have gone viral and in some incidents the perpetrators are black leading to some in the api community to address anti-black sentiment when we put other communities of color down, when we encourage other communities of color to be overrepresented in the criminal justice system, we're really just upholding or uplifting white supremacy. Community leaders want to dispel stereotypes like the criminality of black people and that Asians are the source of COVID. There is an intertwined history between the API and black communities. In the L.A. riots of the 90s, tensions rose between Korean immigrant business owners and black Americans after a 14-year-old black girl was shot and killed by a Korean convenience store owner who thought she was stealing a bottle of orange juice. Asian American studies professor Janelle Wong says we can learn from this history. So I was just peeping a lot of bullshit propaganda and I, and I talked about it a little bit on my live stream. And so I also noticed that other Asian Americans were also peeping the nonsense as well. So I had posted this on Instagram, what some other Asian influencers were saying about the situation. And this is what I wrote. I said, it looks like some Asians are seeing what I said in my live stream yesterday and calling out the BS media propaganda of everyone hating and harassing Asians. It's funny how they have drugged black people into this white man's crime. So y'all go ahead and check this out. Enough is enough. Hate and violence. It has no place in our world, in our country, or in our community. Stop the pandemic of hate. All right, so y'all see what I just posted? Literally, honey, okay? Not even 24 hours later, I get smacked with a post saying that my post was against community guidelines and it was removed for hate speech and that I was harassing the Asian community. 
And I'm like, what the hell? How am I harassing them when all I did was literally repost what other Asian influencers were saying? But then I get in trouble. So this is what I wrote. I said, so posting a video from Asian influencers themselves that show how the media is trying to start beef between black and Asians is not considered hate speech. So unless I'm telling folks to stand in solidarity, IG is telling me I'm committing hate speech against the Asian community. And y'all wonder why I don't come on IG too often. Child, let me go back to my discord where I can think and talk in peace without the thought police of IG harassing me. So that is what I wrote. Um... You know, the whole situation is just a mess. I did submit it for a review because I thought it was bullshit. They did end up releasing it and reposting the video. So that's how I was able to read to you guys what I wrote. So the video is back up. But the fact that they try to silence me because I'm not pushing a certain narrative is BS. Okay. Nobody's excusing what this man did. What he did was horrendous, inexcusable. You know what I'm saying? There's never an excuse for murder. Period, point blank, unless it's self-defense. So nobody's excusing him. But what I'm tired is the media propaganda and how somehow this is not black people's fight. Now, I recall a time when Dylan Roof went into a church, a church, not a massage place, a, a, literally a house of worship in South Carolina and gunned down nine members of this church. I don't recall the media going to the Asian community and saying, what do you guys think about this? Do you guys stand in solidarity with the black community? Y'all need to speak against these hate crimes that white people are committing against black people. I don't recall none of that going down when Dylan Roof shot nine people. But yet and still, when this white dude, Robert Aaron Long, shoots, you know, six Asian women, all of a sudden... Black people need to stand in solidarity and black people, what are y'all thinking? Y'all need to give Asians advice and you guys are minorities too. So it just doesn't make any sense that when it when it's something that happens in the black community, black folks are literally on their own. But when it's something that happens in other minority communities, all of a sudden black people need to stand in solidarity. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't, you know, support this and condemn this. Of course, condemn this. But why is the media all of a sudden making this black people's plights? It's not, you know, and that's the part that I have an issue with. Now, let me also keep it. I'm going to play another video for you guys because, you know, a lot of people don't want to have the real tough conversations when it comes to this. You know, everybody's tiptoeing and trying to spin a different narrative. You know, we've seen Joe Biden talking about this. Kamala Harris, who is also of, you know, Asian descent. You know, she's Indian. Um, she spoke out on this. They're definitely politicizing this as well, where it's not even anymore about the victims. It's not become a whole political thing. So I want to show y'all what Good Morning America had to say. I'm going to show you guys a clip of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. Y'all go ahead and check this out. Family members coming to see firsthand where their loved ones' lives were taken in a violent rampage that has left the community grieving and in pain. I know they feel that like there's a black hole in their chest they're being sucked into and things will never get better. The president and the vice president meeting with Asian American leaders in Georgia, offering comfort during a trip that had previously been planned to promote their COVID-19 relief package. Our prayers are with you and I assure you the one you lost will always be with you. Always be with you. And the day will come when their memory brings a smile to your lips before it brings a tear to your eye. These facts are clear. Six out of the eight people killed on Tuesday night were of Asian descent. Seven were women. The shootings took place in businesses owned by Asian Americans. The shootings took place as violent hate crimes and discrimination against Asian Americans has risen dramatically over the last year and more. Authorities in Georgia this morning say that the accused gunman who killed eight people here is admitting to the shootings. Some guy came in and took the gun, so everybody heard the gunshot. Georgia investigators say that 21-year-old Robert Aaron Long, a white man who they've now charged, is guilty of the deadliest mass murder since 2019. Officers say they were able to track him down thanks to his parents, who saw these surveillance pictures and told police that this was him. 
Police were then able to track his cell phone and caught up with him south of Atlanta. They believe if they hadn't stopped him, he would have continued driving to Florida, gunning down more victims. We were contacted by uh, members of the family uh, indicating that that may be their, their uh, son. They're very distraught uh, uh, and um, they were very helpful in, uh, in this apprehension. Police say he killed eight people at three spas in the Atlanta area. Six of his eight alleged victims were Asian women. We need to make sure if we have any Asian spas, we need to be checking on them. Investigators say that based on their interviews, the attack was more about violence against women. We are not about to get into victim blaming, victim shaming here. And less about race. They say the spas he attacked were businesses he visited before. He apparently has an issue, uh, what he considers a, a, a sex fiction, and sees these locations as something that allows him to, uh, to, um, to go to these places. And, and it's a temptation for him that he wanted to eliminate. Police have not yet ruled this out as a hate crime. The killings come at a time when violence against Asian Americans is growing, thanks in part to racist tropes surrounding the coronavirus. Overnight, thousands showed up at vigils across the country to mourn this loss of life. It's a show of support from a community that is terrified and doing something about it. All right, so you guys just saw those videos of them breaking down, you know, everything that happened. What, uh, what I've noticed a lot of people, especially the media, they're scared to get to the crooks of the matter. The dude Robert Aaron Long is saying this has nothing to do with them being Asian. This has to do more or less with them being women and the fact that he had a sexual addiction. Now, let's keep it real. When it comes to the massage industry, there's a lot of Asians in that industry. Just like when it comes to the nail industry. Most nail shops are ran by Asians. So if you go and you attack nail shops, nine times out of ten, the victims will be Asian. That's just the truth of the matter. There's nothing racist about that. It'd be like somebody going in and saying they're about to attack, you know, soul food joints in the South. Well, if they went in and they started attacking people at soul food joints, most people who run soul food restaurants, most are black people. You get what I'm saying? So that is why most of the victims were Asian, because most Asians, not all, but a lot of massage parlors are ran by Asian women. Let's also not forget that massage parlors also have a really shady reputation of being linked to prostitution and human trafficking rings. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys just some of these articles that somebody put together on IG from just different trafficking from just different massage parlors who have been busted in recent years. Even happened here in Minnesota. There was a huge bust at a massage parlor here in the Twin Cities. Okay. So this is happening all over the nation. So I think people like me and others have every right to question. Is there more to this story? How deep does the rabbit hole go? All right, so you guys just saw that video. So while this man is saying that this wasn't, you know, a racist attack, it was more of an attack on women. But I believe it's a little bit of both. I think two things can coexist into one. I think it's unfair to just say that, oh, it's mainly women as opposed to it being Asian. Either way, it's not right. But what a lot of people don't really want to talk about, and I spoke about this about, I want to say maybe six, seven months ago with the whole Jeannie Mai and Young Jeezy situation and how, you know, certain cultures, they fetishize Asian women just like they fetishize black men. 
and I did a live stream about this and I went pretty deep and a lot of people don't want to be honest about that conversation um, where Asian women are not only seen as the model minority, but they're also seen as hypersexual objects in many white man's eyes. And unfortunately, it's basically been ingrained in them to see Asian women this way because of the propaganda that was fed to many white Americans during the 1940s when there were all the things going on with the Korean War, the Vietnam War, and a lot of these women had to work in different brothels. And then you really saw the hyper-sexualization of Asian women being seen as these tropes, these wives that GIs would go overseas and they would fall in love and bring them back to America. There's always been this weird um, stereotype of Asian women and white men and the way that they don't even treat them or look at them as humans, but as subservient, obedient objects. And there's a lot of danger in that. Yo, what's up? Hey, tea sippers to listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.